Every once in a while, Cooler Master sends me a big box of stuff, and I'm often like, hey guys, that's a lot of stuff, and I appreciate it, but it's, it's too much, it's too much stuff. And then sometimes I go to CES, right after they send me the stuff, and I talk to them there, and then they remind me, remember that stuff we sent you in that nice note? And I'm like, okay, let me do an unboxing of all of it, so that's what this video is all about. <laughs> so is that too straightforward? Excellent! G-Skill's new Trident Z Royal Series DDR4 RGB memory kits are made for high-class PCs, with each meticulously crafted module featuring a full-length crystalline light bar atop a polished heat spreader with a luxuriant reflective gold or silver finish, reminding you to appreciate the finer things in life, like the freedom to choose from Trident Z Royal RGB kits in 16GB to 128GB capacities and up to DDR4 4600 MHz memory speeds. If you're looking to give your high-class system build the Royal treatment, click the sponsor link in the description below. So to clarify a bit, Cooler Master makes a ton of really nice accessories. I don't always have the chance to look at all of them individually, so this is going to be my best attempt to sort of give you guys an unboxing and a look at each one of these. We have some new SK series keyboards down here that I think some of you guys might be interested because they're very small and portable. We have an RGB mouse mat, which you may love or hate, depending on whether or not you like RGB. We've got an MM830 mouse, and we have some new keyboards. I'm going to do an unboxing, a quick look at each one of these, and you guys let me know at the end of the video what you thought. Order of operations is going to be the mouse mat, the mouse, and then all the keyboards, so follow the stack here if you're interested. This is the MP860 dual-sided gaming mouse pad with RGB illumination. It's a dual-surface mouse pad, speed surface, and control surface, and of course RGB illumination means you're probably going to be plugging this into your computer. So you got the Cooler Master logo there with a bit of RGB around the logo edge, and then the edge of the actual mouse mat itself glows nice and RGB and flip it over if you want the smooth side, or flip it over if you want the more textured side. Our next victim is the MM830, 24,000 max DPI, hidden D-pad buttons. So you gotta, you gotta hunt them down and find them yourself. Four zone RGB and a precision wheel. PBD chassis to minimize wear and tear, along with Omron switches and Japanese Alps scroll encoder for jam-free durability. This mouse is a little on the larger size, I would say. Um, if you're a palm gripper, it uh, fills up your hand uh, a lot. Here on the side, we can see the hidden D-pad. So up, down, left, and right via a D-pad on the side. DPI switcher at the center here. Scroll, scroll wheel feels pretty nice. And again, a fairly lengthy braided cable. And there's the mouse plugged in. As you can see, four zones of lighting, we are told. So I believe one is a scroll wheel, one is a DPI, one is the Cooler Master logo there, and then one is the sort of edge lighting along the back there. And then it's got a little uh, black and white OLED screen there on the side as well. I'll be honest, that seems like a location where if you're using it and you want to look at it, you would be like, oh, what's it say? Ah, Cooler Master, make it yours. Uh, I do like a little thumb rest there though, that's nice. And it is kind of textured. It's got kind of a, some rubberized texture on it. Then of course you can pair this up with the RGB mouse pad and you have RGB in as close proximity to your hand as you possibly could while gaming, which is obviously gonna improve your gameplay. So that's the MM830 mouse and the MP860 RGB mouse pad. And in case you're wondering, the OLED display is supposed to be able to show your stats while you're playing the game. I imagine you need the software to tie into that. That goes a bit beyond the quick unboxing I'm doing for today's video, so we'll come back to it. Moving over to the keyboards, we got the SK series. Uh, what does SK mean? I can't verify this for sure, but process of deduction, SK maybe means slim keys or slim keycaps because these both use the new Cherry MX slim mechanical key switches, which are slim. They're, they're very small. So with both the SK630 here and the SK650, you're getting a very portable keyboard thanks to those Cherry MX low profile RGB switches. These happen to use the red version of those. And you have the SK630, which is 10 keyless, so very small and portable. And then you've got the SK650, which is full size. And it's not that combination sort of mid-range one here. You get a full keypad here, as well as all your directional buttons and home, insert, delete. So in the box, uh, with each keyboard, you're going to get a little keycap puller. That's always very convenient to have when it comes to mechanical key switches. And you also get a braided, oh my gosh, USB Type-C cable. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It even comes with a Velcro strap to wrap up the cable when you're not using it. We have a lovely plush keyboard carrying holder here, so, you know, take it on the go. So I think what people are going to most like about these is just they're really clean. Very clean, very simple design. So brushed aluminum across the top when it comes to the base above the keys. The keys are low profile, so, you know, it's not like the slimmest keyboard I've ever seen. Definitely shorter travel time than standard cherry keys. And then you'll also notice that there's no spacing, indentation,
indentation or anything here. You have a really flat typing surface. That's purely a matter of preference. Some people like having the concave keys and the rows that are kind of staggered down as you get further to the bottom. Some people like this really flat level surface, but you still have your home keys with some notches on them there. USB Type-C plug is right here in the dead center, so plugs them like so. And then we have the keys that light up as well. Uh, you'll notice there are some function keys across the top here. These are accessed with the Cooler Master button here, which functions as your function button. That will allow you to do stuff like controlling the RGB lighting. Cooler Master actually does a really good job with allowing you to control the RGB lighting on keyboards without needing software. But according to the box, there is software that you can also use to control this if you so desire. But up here for function buttons, we have some LED controls. And then on the top right, we have some uh, media controls. So stop, play, pause, forward, back. And then further function controls at the top and bottom here, also for controlling LEDs. I've got them both plugged in now, so you can see they're just lighting up in a default purple. Let me see if I can remember how the function keys work to change that. Cooler Master has a tutorial on how to do all this stuff. I am just sort of mashing keys, trying to remember exactly what I should remember. But you can you can punch these buttons here, so like red, green, and blue. And that will allow you to add like eight levels of red, uh, and then it resets green the same way, and then it will reset blue the same way, and it resets. So now we have no red, green, or blue, and then you can add your red. Ah, see, so now we have all red, and then oh, I want to mix red and blue, make purple again. We can add our blue and make a different level of that. Now we have some purple again. Add all three colors and you get white. There, that's kind of white. So guys, I know this is just a quick unboxing, but initial impression is pretty positive here. These have a real nice feel. Uh, they're not too terribly heavy as well if you're going to take them on the go. And again, I just I think it comes back to just that really simple, clean design, brushed aluminum across the top, just a very slight bevel around the edge here, and then uh, the bottom, you're just keeping it pretty straightforward and simple. So that is the SK630 and SK650 keyboards, now featuring the new Cherry MX low profile red switches. Next is the CK530. This is a full mechanical mechanical switch keyboard. This one's using blue switches. You can tell they're a little clicky down there. Uh, this one's going to give you a reasonably priced mechanical keyboard option. It still has an aluminum top plate and everything. I wasn't able to find pricing for this right now, but there's a CK550 version of this too that's a full-size one, and they should be very reasonably priced. Sorry, I can't get more specific than that, but uh, let's open it up and take a look. So the only thing that sort of initially tells me this is maybe not the most expensive uh, mechanical keyboard is that the cable is not braided. Um, other than that though, you know, you've got the feel of the blue switches. You've got this aluminum uh, top plate. It's just sort of folded across the top there. It is a plastic housing otherwise, but it does still have some feet at the back so you can kick it up at an angle. And they've also still included a little uh, keycap puller, which is very convenient if you ever need to pull the keycaps off to clean or if you want to switch the keycaps off. With all of these, you can switch out to other compatible keycaps. Oh, and did I mention it's also still RGB? Hopefully that is somewhat obvious, but yes, still RGB and you can still use uh, the keys just like I showed you before to add different colors, green, blue, red, and so on and so forth. And there's other uh, lighting functions you can do in there, like I'm just pressing around. Oh, look, there we go. That That's what I wanted. I wanted some rainbow vomit just to show like, yes, it's RGB. And here you can see there's also a more standard layout for the keycaps. These are somewhat concave. This is 10 keyless, so you've got some function keys over on, here on the side, but no numpad, so you'd be relying on the top keys for that. But of course, if you do need a full-size version, this is available in that as well with the CK550. Just a couple more keyboards here. We have moved into the MK series. MK is Master Keys. That means it's Cooler Master's top-of-the-line series, and they have come out with an MK730. The MK750 was formerly their flagship in this range, and that was a full-size keyboard that had stuff like a magnetic magnetic keypad and a extra RGB accents that go around the frame of the keyboard itself and overall their top-notch construction and build quality as well as of course Cherry MX switches once again these are using Cherry MX red switches so from my understanding when Cooler Master came out with the MK750 keyboard uh, a lot of people were like I like it but it's too big because a lot of people like these little 10 keyless keyboards whether it's just to give you a little bit more room on the right side for your mouse movement uh, or if you like to have it portable, or if you just never use a numpad and you'd rather not waste your money on extra mechanical switches for the numpad that you're not actually going to use. So here are your box contents. You have, again, a nicely braided cord here, and once again, Type-C. Thank you so much, Cooler Master, for switching all of these keyboards over to Type-C connections. It's so much better. And then you've got an extra set of keycaps here. These are purple, and these are for your WASD keys and a few that are right next to it, as well as an escape key, and they've also included a keycap puller in there, too. Now, for the Master Keys, keyboards, Cooler Master has an inset for your USB Type-C cable right there, and that's to allow you to route it off to the side if you want to via one of these channels, or you can just route it straight back and out the front. 
Now here you can also probably see the accent lighting going across the front of the keyboard. And then here's that nice cushy wrist rest. Uh, this does have a very nice feel to it. Sort of a soft, dry touch. It's not leather, but it's something close to it. And then it does have some magnets on it, so it'll kind of cozy up to the keyboard itself and stay in place. Beyond that, once again, 10 keyless over here. So go for the uh, MK750 if you want your 10 key on there too. Same function buttons here for controlling your RGB lighting. So you can switch between different modes or per key or anything like that. There is an RGB rainbow effect for you guys to get a better idea of the, the yes, these are RGB mechanical switches. And then on the bottom, you still have uh, the feet that you can pop up to give yourself a bit of declination as you are typing. And just an overall bit more finished look with the wraparound of the brush metal edge on the side. I actually kind of like how it goes from brush metal to kind of a texture bit on there. It's a, just a little nice aesthetic touch. And there you have it, Cooler Master's very popular flagship keyboard, the MK750, now available in 10 keyless as the MK730. So guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. My unboxing and quick look at a bunch of different Cooler Master peripherals. Let me know what you guys thought of this video because every time I get a bunch of stuff like that, I'm like, ah, should I do a single more in-depth video on one of these things or should I just show everyone what arrived really quickly like I've done today? But hopefully you're now more aware of some products that you weren't aware of before. Maybe you're even considering buying some of them. If you are, there are links down in this video's description to the products, at least the ones that are available right now. So check those out if you're interested. Also hit the thumbs up button while you're down there and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more tech content coming at you real soon. Thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time.